Hello and welcome to Hobson Bros. This week... We totally forgot that we already did a Craft Beer 101 on Imperial Stouts, so Imperial Stouts again. For an open window on the Craft Beer world, Max and Chris from Hobson So as we talked in the intro, we've actually done Russian Imperial Stout. It's actually kind of funny. So Chris messaged me the other day and he's like, hey, we got to do a one-on-one on Imperial Stouts. Yep. Didn't really think anything of it. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, and then it just clicked. I'm like, wait a second. We've done this before. We've done the exact video, but instead of Imperial Stout, we went with Russian Imperial Stout, which is essentially the exact same style, yep. just a different way to say it, yep. uh, which comes from the fact that uh, this style became very popular in, in the States, and I think we mentioned this in the video. So they kind of dropped the Russian part yep. of, of the beer. They just called them Imperial Stouts because of the whole Cold War and all that. They were The Russians and the Americans were not always buddy-buddy, right? Nope. Uh, that's one of the big <laughs> reasons why they kind of made a distinction between Russian Imperial Stout and Imperial Stout. Uh, so initially in English style, now most in American style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk about it some more. Yeah, because... Chris, anything to add? This, uh, this English style, like we already said in this video, uh, was mainly exported to Russia because of the Empress, I guess, over there. Quote me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, she really liked the beer. Duchess or Empress. Catherine. Uh, I don't know. Like, do you... I, I believe it was... Uh... Fuck, I don't know. I can't remember. I guess you'll have to go see in our last video. I guess, but um, <laughs> mostly uh, this style is known for its dark, thick color like you see on this one. Really great example, which is one of the other reasons why we did a one-on-one on Imperial South is because we received one from uh, Wellington Brewery. Uh, so yeah, this is the four pack from Wellington Brewery. So uh, shameless plug. Thanks a lot, Wellington Brewery. Max also added. And I just want to mention, I, I did not receive it. So I ordered things from uh, Shortfinger. They're a uh, homebrew supply shop. If you're into homebrew, definitely check them out. They're mostly in the uh, around Toronto area, I want to okay. say, even though I know I'm going to get shot because of this because it's not Toronto at all. It's mostly in the Guelph Kitchener area. They're an awesome homebrew shop. Definitely go check out their website. If they deliver in your area, go for it. It's well worth it. And one of the systems they have, which I thought was really cool, uh, and I hope they get to implement it at the college, is they will send your order to a, a local brewery oh, that's closer to you. That's cool. So you can stop by the brewery to pick up your homebrew stuff. And at the same time, you know, you buy a four pack or a six pack of uh, whatever, that's right? That's cool. Um, which I thought was really cool. That's uh, really cool. And yeah, as being in the the uh, the brewing college, I'm kind of it's kind of weird that the college doesn't have that same agreement with them because we order stuff constantly. Yeah. So I hope that uh, Rob from Shortfinger gets to do that deal with the college because I love their service, I love their stuff. We are not sponsored for this at all. It's just the way I feel about and this. This. Uh, you were yeah. Saying, so Chris, this sorry, ends the uh, shameless plug. Uh, segment of the video. It was a, it was a long a, shameless a plug, long one because so. I love Wellington. Yeah. I am a sucker for Wellington. Uh, love the folks there, the brewers, the, the staff, the beer in general, and also love short. Exactly. Fingers, so. so yeah. So shout out, big shout out to Mark. Exactly. And everyone <laughs> watching the video, both links will be in the description down below, so you guys can check him out straight up after the video. So back to Imperial Stouts, mostly known as a classic beer but also uh which again uh beer by the numbers talked a little bit about it covered it up on his tenure uh kind of like back in back ten year back in time in 2008 he kind of like compared what the brewing industry in the united states looked like compared to today and back then i realized from his research how like everything craft brewery or just brewing in general the most popular beers were imperial stouts big 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 bold beards barley wines everything in the top 10 was over like eight nine ten percent so i think it's something that really drove the craft beer industry at one point because people really switched up from light watery beers to 
dark, bold, super flavorful, flavorful beers. And the beer from Wellington Brewery is not a new one. Like it's actually like an older recipe that they just got back into the lineup because it's winter time. It's it's coming, right? So we want those warmer beers and the flavors from them. Coffee, toffee, a little bit of booziness at the same time. And some of them are also aged in oak barrels, which really makes makes the perfect winter beer, I guess. It, it's just nice, warms your heart, but also like the look of it is reminiscent of a nice dark black coffee. So I think that impro- yeah. yeah that, that's a good point, Chris. You, you've said a couple things there. When you think of, of an Imperial Stout, what flavors, what aromas do you initially have? I mean, I, I've heard you say coffee and roastiness, yeah. especially. Anything else in there? Uh, I do get like a little bit of the bitterness from the coffee on my end. Uh, okay. Roastiness, okay. So we'll get a little bit of sweetness, caramels a little bit, chocolate, but not like too much chocolate. Just a nice blend of all those three flavors. So usually I like my Imperial Stout so a little bit drier with those nice roasty flavors. Yeah, it's it's interesting because most most times you would think of a dark malt. That's the flavors that you would you would essentially be thinking about. Yeah, you think coffee, you think chocolate, you think dark chocolate, which is kind of a bittersweet flavor, which kind of interesting from those malts. You'd also think very roasty, yeah. like heavily kilned kind of malts. Um, but from there, from malts in general, you can get a lot of other flavors that I think I find the Belgium uh, kind of tradition of brewing went more towards, which is figs, plums, uh, and what's the other word I'm Red looking fruits. for? Berries, things like that. Red fruits, which is crazy because yeah. all those flavors are not coming from your yeast, they're not coming from your hops, they're not coming from additions that you've made. Yeah. It's all the malts, depending on how they were roasted, okay. which is crazy to think that you can have a, a, a berry flavor and it's your cereal that brought you that flavor. Um, so did, with with yeah. imperial stouts, does that mean it's even more pronounced? Yeah, because I do get some like mean? blueberries hints on this one. I'm not yeah. sure that I just got that. So. I mean, you might for sure in the aromas and the flavors. It's it's in the malt, so it is going to come out a little more depending on which kinds you use. Okay, so that means that now we should probably look a little bit more into malts, right? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we, we, I think the last three one-on-ones we've done, I've mentioned that I, I am working, Chris is working, we're working on a series uh, of the four kind of base ingredients. We've touched upon them in the last couple of videos uh, and we're not ready because I still have a lot to learn. There's still a lot that comes into, into those ingredients, but malts is a big one. You got to remember the beer is four ingredients and how, and the secret one's the fifth one that I'm not going to say because I've mentioned it in the past. And if What's the fifth ingredient in beer? I've mentioned it in I other know. videos. So if you know, put it in the comment down below. I know it. I uh, won't say it. But what's yeah. the fifth ingredient yeah, in it, beer? That's it is a fifth one, but essentially it's it's four ingredients, four ingredients, the fifth secret one that make so many different beers, so many different flavors, and just in the way that you interpret those ingredients, or the way you cultivate them, or the way you use them. Yeast being one of the biggest ones, uh, but one of the most used ones is the malts. And even when you think of your pilsners and your lagers, you don't necessarily think malt, but that's the flavors that are coming up the most. That's what they're trying to put forward, is the subtleties in the malts. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And with Imperial Stouts, it's the same thing. The hops are just there to balance off the sweetness, but in some cases, it doesn't balance off anything. They just add it a little bit and they kind of let those fruity, uh, sweet flavors from the malts come through as much as they can. Okay. Um, and I think we've mentioned in the other video, uh, aging those beers is kind of key. Uh, you're going to develop a lot of different flavors from aging Imperial Stouts that you will from drinking them fresh. Yeah. Um, from, yeah, from my experience, like usually... This. Aging some Imperial Stouts will give you a lot more of those nice subtle flavors you talked about. So a bit more figs, ra raisins, uh, kind of like darker fruit flavor profile coming through. A little bit less of the roastiness and, dates and, and stuff like that. bitterness yeah. and more on date side of things. Like a little bit more like a dessert beer will come out uh, over a year or two. After that, I think it just doesn't really make a difference. If I'm not yeah. wrong, it depends on the beer because 
Uh, I've, oh, it just yeah, depends on the beer. I've heard Beer yeah. doing some verticals of 10 years of Peche Martel, which is also like a, an Imperial coffee stout. And literally a lot of differences between every single year between them because the batches wasn't always the same thing. Even though it's the same recipe, it evolves differently looking at the water profile or even... Oh, consistency in process is extremely hard to nail in beer. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the big breweries, but I've got to respect them for being constant yep. and be in their process is on point and efficient and, and, and cost like cost efficient as well. It's incredible being able to do that on the scale they have. It's crazy. It's incredible. And something you don't see in, in smaller operations because no. You really can't. You don't have money to throw at a problem, but you also don't have time to work on the problems you have. So you kind of just try to adjust it the more so you can. Uh, but I do urge you, Peche Martel is a good one to buy in bulk and, and have it in, in increments. Oh, yeah. Have different years. Try them out. That's why they sell it in uh, four pack. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea. Or is it? I mean, uh, I buy a four pack, buy two four packs. Buy four. Four four packs. So you get a four by four. I guess if you want to go that route, go for it. <laughs> Honestly, follow your budget at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess that that's another thing we could uh, debate on it for the next ten minutes or so, or more. Yeah, but I I, I think we've pretty much covered. Yeah. I I do want to go on the record one more yeah. time. I'm not a huge fan of imperial stouts. Uh, I like my stouts on the lighter side of. Uh, uh, of alcohol and even flavors. Um, anyways, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say this now, uh, and as a bonus on whatever you want to put in the comments below, suggest more Imperial Stouts. I want to try different things. A lot of the ones I've had were very boozy. I'm not a huge fan of boozy beers, so maybe you've found something that's very subtle. I know a student from the college right now, if you're in the Niagara area and you can make your way to Niagara on the Lake to, to the Dundottle campus, okay. uh, he made an Imperial Stout. It is delicious. It's one of the best stouts I've had. And one of the reasons, one of the big reasons is y you don't feel the alcohol at all. It's a 9% beer, does not taste boozy at all. I, I think it's, um, it's, so it's a challenge be behind it. And if if I it's, can get you started on the suggestion, Max, Shalib has a really good yeah. one. Uh, I have one in the fridge right now, so it might end up on your doorstep soon. Perfect, because it, it is the challenge. It's to make a beer that's not boozy, but it has all those flavors. Exactly. Um, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Sorry for... Uh, Chris, anything to add? Oh, sorry for repeating ourselves. Uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> the name of the video is going to be Imperial, not Russian Imperial. It's so different. So different. <laughs> so different. Oh, yeah. Night and day. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video.